Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Saurabh Saha, and I'm an assistant professor of mechanical engineering here at Georgia Tech. And our group works on the art and science of making things which are incredibly complex in shape, but they are very, very small. They're small on the length scale, on the size of human hair. And what I'm going to talk about today is how we have informed some of our research goals based on achieving sustainable development goals. Specifically, goal seven, which is on providing access to clean and sustainable energy to all. Now, the problem with current mix of energy sources today is most of our energy today is produced by burning fossil fuels. So these fossil fuels are neither sustainable sources of energy, nor are they clean sources of energy. Now, renewables such as solar and wind energy are coming up. The problem with them is they are intermittent sources of energy. So what I mean by intermittent sources of energy is we, we cannot produce these energy throughout the day. And the reason is the sun does not shine throughout the day. Now, what if we can make the sun shine throughout the day? That's the promise of nuclear fusion. If we can build a tiny sun on Earth and switch it on and off as we desire, we can then use nuclear fusion as a clean and abundant source of energy on Earth. Now, as preposterous as it sounds, people have actually done this. They have created many suns on Earth in the form of hydrogen bombs. And what happens in hydrogen bomb is the same thing that happens in the sun, which is nuclear fusion. The sun achieves nuclear fusion, which is the process of bringing two atoms, typically hydrogen, together, very close to each other when they start merging and forming a new element. As it forms a new element, some of the mass of the original atoms is lost, and that mass gets converted into energy. Now, the sun can combine, fuse these atoms together because of its extreme gravitational pull, in hydrogen bombs, that is done by exploding materials, but it's incredibly challenging to control this process of fusing atoms together. Now, there is one way to do that, which is an inertial fusion. What you do is take the hydrogen fuel, put it in a very small capsule, a shell, that looks as big as a pea shell, fill it with the hydrogen fuel, then bombard that, that capsule with light from all sides. And that light compresses the fuel and creates conditions that are similar to conditions that are created inside the sun. So now, within this capsule, we have created a mini sun that will create energy, or that can potentially create energy through nuclear fusion. It's a clean, abundant source of energy that is something we can control by, by switching on and off the light that goes into the capsule. The problem is that people have hypothesized, hypothesized this for a very long time, but it was only in 2022 that this was demonstrated for the first time. That was a very exciting scientific experiment. It took a single capsule, compressed it, and created more energy than that went into the capsule. Now, that was a very interesting scientific demonstration, but there's a long way to go from that scientific demonstration to making nuclear fusion a practical source of clean, abundant energy. And the problem is that capsule itself making that capsule. That's where we come in. And the challenge with that capsule is that capsule holds a finite amount of energy. That energy, amount of energy, can power a US home for a day. So if you want nuclear fusion to be a practical source of energy, we, want, we need to burn these capsules frequently and burn a lot of these capsules. So being able to make these capsules at a high rate and at a low cost is a technological challenge. Now, where are we in terms of the cost of these capsules? These capsules cost about 10,000 times more than gold today. And we need to be at least on parity with gold to, be to, to have an economical viable nuclear fusion. Uh, our work involves really coming up with new 3D printing techniques, new manufacturing ways of making these capsules, making these fast enough and low cost. And within this context, really the cost of that capsule is driven, or cost of making anything, is driven by three factors. One is how much does the raw material cost? Second is how much the machines cost? And third is how long does it take to make that part? And the cost of making these capsules is, is 
dominated by the cost of manufacturing. These are extremely cheap materials, but it takes a very long time to make these capsules, and the machines cost a lot, about a million dollars to make something this size, and a few weeks to make something really this size, pea-sized capsule. And we are coming up with 3D printing techniques that can print these really fast and print them at a low cost with low cost equipment. Where we are today is about halfway to that 10,000 mark. We hope that in future, with further improvements, with coming up with new ways of making these small capsules, we'll be able to hit that 10,000 mark where nuclear fusion will become both, uh, will become a practical means of creating clean and abundant energy. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.